All right, folks, good morning, and uh, this is the end of the story on Shoshone. And uh, I did two, two videos of him in my snaffle. Now it's back to the curb bit. Now you know he's, he's 10 years old, so it's not like I'm introducing something new. I'm just changing the way things are. So right off the bat, I back him up. And, and if you, the, the beauty of this bit is it's going to be a real good visual for you. If you watch the cheek piece, it's going to come back and forth back and forth and what that is is me pulling and releasing I can see it on the ground over here on my right and if I don't release two things happen I don't teach him to understand the concept and I'm gonna teach him how to gap at the mouth again which is what was taught by a human so if you can watch the cheek piece coming back into place the height of his pole and the intentional movement of his feet the feet moving should coincide with the cheek piece being forward because he's intentionally walking backwards. That's what I'm after. All right, I feel the engine start to die. Release, loose rein. I want to have my hand on the neck and have the horse walk backwards. My legs are off, my spine is up. I'm tilted back about a half an inch, not six inches. Now I'm letting him free up his neck and exhale, asking, asking. Now when you're working cattle, I depend on the genetics of a horse to actually help me do the cattle work. Well, what happens in a crow with a lot of people is they take a death hold on the reins and then they never let go until it's over. Now that what they've done is made a resentful horse. And uh, it's, it's not good. That's not how this is supposed to do. Right there is how a horse is supposed to work. Right there, 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 okay? He's obviously not there yet, so over time, he's 10. I'm going to own him till I get my colt and the spade bit, so and then Deb put claims to him, so it's not like I'm in a hurry. And I'm sure you get tired of this hurry thing because time is the number one thing I hear about from people, the lack thereof. Well, okay. The way I see it is that for this horse to change his mind, he has to thoroughly understand and look for release. He's not looking for release. There he is. So that's how this is done. And when I'm waiting on a truck in the alleyway, I'll be doing the same exercises in the alley. Cowboys spend half their lives waiting on a truck. Now the turnaround, what's kind of working on this horse, it's another little wrinkle. Is a, there's a word for it in the dressage world, but I'm not sure what it is. But what it means is that you start walking in a circle and the hind feet still keep walking, but the front end is turning. And that seems to help with this horse. Now once again, I have to get this accomplished on a release. So when I put my spur on to turn left, I'm walking in a circle now. Now I'm gonna ask the forehand to walk across while the hindquarter's still moving. I'm just playing with the reins. Right, shoulder, left seat bone. There, left foot. I say the word there, the feet made it, but the skull didn't. Well, there again, I'm not going to get it today. Toe out, one step, left toe out, right shoulder back, check, release, check, release, check, release. The more checking I do, the more I'm telling the horse I need him to shift his weight to the hind quarter. Check, pressure. And the more pressure that I put on, shifts the hind quarter back, so it's a catch 22. I want him to do this on a loose rein, but to get him on the hind quarter, I have to pull. So, well, okay, I'm pulling. When I'm all done, I won't have to pull. 
Now all this amounts to is folks is that it's just because this horse is cold jawed. You know, like a lot of horses his age, they just don't their mouth isn't light anymore. That that was adios a long time ago. By poor riding. Well, you don't go to group over this, you just fix it. Now I'm gonna really accent my shoulder, pressure back, step over, boom. Straighten out my torso. Looking to the left, which is a pre-signal. This is a pre-signal horse, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, as my toe turns out, I'm saying here it comes. Thank you. Looking here it comes. See how the head goes into my hand? Well, that's just from years of defending his mouth. It's nothing personal. Anyway, I, he gave me the, because of my other bit, I showed him the concept and he got it. Well, now I'm putting the same kind of bit that he's been running through for quite a while. It's just a curved bit. It just happens to have silver on it. I don't mean to brag, but I'm just telling you, this is the kind of bit I like for this horse. So, there again, over time, he's going to lighten up. When I'm tickled to death is when I walk backwards, he intentionally walks backwards and I can hear the cricket rolling. When I can make a right hand turn, or working in the alley, and he's moving, and I hear the cricket, then I know I've got him. Because that means he went ahead and said, okay, I'm gonna give the human one more chance. If the human pulls on me too much, I'm going to push back. That's that simple, that's where it's at. So all I gotta do is say, Pat, how well can you present yourself? And oh, by the way, I'm not gonna trade him, I'm gonna outlast him. That's how this actually works. So, Something I wanted to mention about the trivia world is that when you get hired on with a big outfit and if you're heading out across country in a group and you got to go through three gates, always make sure that you take turns, take your turn opening a gate. You don't let the cow boss do it or whoever's leading the circle. You don't let them do all the gates. That's a sign of you're lazy. So when you're within a couple hundred feet of a gate, all you got to do, because you're behind the stirrup, you just say, I got it. Now, if you get down to the nut cutting, like I was taught, is that you always go around the left side if you can. That's the side every horse is used to. And if somebody's sitting on a colt and you betray them by trotting past their right eye, you're not going to look upon you favorably. So, if I was doing it, I'd say, I got it. And I'd go out to the left, trot up, open the gate. Everybody goes through. Now here's the important part. Everybody, meaning five guys, ride through the gate. Once they're through the gate, they stop their horses. And the horse's feet cannot move one quarter of one inch. One inch on every horse. So the man's closing the gate. Now he's going to get back on his horse. If it's a colt, he's going to have a chance now to not have the herd problem of movement. So he gets on his colt, gets all adjusted, and when he actually moves his horse, the man that opened the gate and shut it, that's when everybody can get going again. After he moves the direction you're supposed to be going. So just remember that because that's a really big deal in the etiquette world. So here's the horse. Here's what's supposed to happen. Here's the horse. Here's what's supposed to happen. Okay, now I can get this horse to bridle up. Well, getting a horse to bridle up is for a photo shoot. What I want him to do is walk backwards and bridle up. So that's the difference. That right there is actually what I'm after. So I'm gaining on him. Poco a poco. Thank you. See if she can tell them apart.